On Flash High, pilot, written by Molly Driscoll. Teaser. Montage of clips of women throughout history. One, Eve gives the forbidden fruit to Adam. Since the very first slut-shaming of Eve, women have always been judged. Two, witches burn at the stake during the Salem witch trials. Three, Hester Prince sports the A in the scarlet letter. And no one judges women harsher than other women. Four, a group of village women snickered a very pregnant Virgin Mary waddling through the bazaar. I'm sure Mary's friends thought her bun in the oven wasn't exactly kosher. Interior, Dr. Brownstein's office, waiting room, morning. A sweet-faced blonde cheerleader, Grace Archer, 16, sits in a waiting room surrounded by pregnant women. We know when all the damning eyes are on us, especially when you're 16 and in a cheerleader uniform that clearly doesn't fit you while at the gyno's office in the heart of the Bible Belt, Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. An old biddy, clutching her Bible, shakes her head and Grace pulls out her snug cheerleading top trying to conceal her small yet swollen tummy. But like all classically trained southern dads, I've mastered the fake grin. My mother, not so much. A plastic, overly made up Bravo housewife type, Diane, 38, snaps at the biddy. What are you staring at, Grandma? The cataract's finally kicking in. The biddy stumbles to stand, dropping her Bible. Grace picks it up for her. I'm so sorry. Don't touch that. The biddy hands her an adoption pamphlet. I hope God guides you in the right direction. A nurse appears at the doorway and yells out at the same time the old biddy mumbles under her breath. Grace slut. Archer? That's me. I mean, not the slut, but I'm Grace. <laughs> Grace stuffs the pamphlet in her backpack. The condemning eye of the ladies watch as Grace walks, head down towards the nurse. Or, I guess I'm both. Interior, Dr. Brownstein's office, morning. Dr. Brownstein, 60. A balding mensch speaks directly to Diane. Every teenager hears the same speech at the gyno. Grace focuses in on the gross plastic fetus statue that finds its way into every gynecologist's office in America. It's totally normal to have urgents. Your the hormones are acting crazy. Hormones, check. You're not going to feel like yourself. Your sex drive... Sex drive, check. It's like it's ripped right from an after-school special. The will plummet. Wait, what? Bone aches, hot flashes, vaginal dryness. Did he get his appointments messed up? These things are totally normal. They are? Because you're in menopause. I did not see that coming. Off a of from grace. End of season. Act 1. <coughs> Interior, Dr. Brownstein's office, morning. Grace and Diane sit, frozen in shock. Here's the thing about being a minor in any medical situation. You're basically a car at the mechanics. Grace has stage 4 endometriosis. Probably the worst case of it I've seen in my career. Although not life-threatening, the pain's extreme. Prescribe her some pain pills. Don't reverse Botox her into middle age. No one talks to you, just to the owner. Those drugs are highly addictive. Menopause will slow down the growth of her endometriosis and hopefully put off future surgeries. But we had the surgery, but we now have matching mother-daughter C-section scars. Shouldn't we be cured by now? Diane, we spoke about this back in May. There's no cure. Grace will have this for the rest of her life. That was an emergency surgery to deal with the eight-inch mass on her ovary due to her endometriosis. But she will have smaller surgeries in the future. Finally, Dr. Brownstein addresses Grace about her own health. Grace, I, I truly feel menopause is your best option. If we could give you uh, your first injection today, how does that sound? Horrible. Sounds good. Exterior, Saudi Daisy High School. Parking lot, day. Parked in Diane's age-inappropriate lime green VW Bug convertible, Diane and Grace stare at the oversized letterboard, Saudi Daisy High School, home of the rebels. Take it all in, because it's all over. Mom, you're overreacting. And you're underreacting. Menopause. That's a life ruiner. A lady gained 60 pounds on that Lupron poison he injected you with. That's not going to happen to me. Those are like the crazy side effect me list during drug commercials. And this lady said she lost all sex drive. There goes Charlie! No, because no one's going to find out. That is if I can slip inside and drop off my doctor's note to the nurse before classes break. 
Grace gets out of the car and kisses her mom's cheek. After everything we worked for, how can you be a cheerleader, Charlie's girlfriend, and homecoming princess, when you're more hot flash than hot? I lost my summer because of this stupid thing. I'm not going to lose anything else. Interior, SDHS, nurse's office, day. A chubby cat lady type, Nurse Wilson, 51, grasps Grace's hand from across the desk. I want to welcome you to the change. None of my friends have started yet, so we can be Paul's little partners. Grace slides her hand away. We're not really going through it. Oh, but it says right here in your doctor's note, medical menopause. Yes, but I'm 16, so it's not going to affect me like most women. Well, I hope not. At one night, I experienced more emotions than the week's worth of general hospital episodes. Your doctor sent over some excellent supplements, so come by every day after lunch. Joining the Adderall antidepressant after lunch line would blow my cover. I'll keep them in my locker in case a symptom hits out of nowhere. Oh, the dogs will sniff them out. I'll see you after lunch. Grace spots an old cheerleading photo behind Nurse Wilson and an idea hits her. You know, we're looking for a new cheer advisor. Interior, SDHS, common area, moments later. Grace slinks out of the nurse's office, but she's caught by Savannah Jenkins, 16, who's faker than her bad spray tan. Scoring diet pills? What? Looks like bailing on cheer camp <laughs> to get your wisdom teeth out wasn't smart. Clearly, you needed the cardio. But maybe Doug's right. Imperfection makes us beautiful. Sometimes my whole kill with kindness thing is a real bitch because with Savannah, sometimes I'd rather just kill the bitch. Your concern never ceases to amaze me, but no, I'm not popping pills. Then why visit the Coop's office? I hope you didn't contract anything this summer. Actually, Mrs. Wilson is going to be our new cheer advisor, so I'll be popping in there all the time. Nurse Wilson? The only cheer she knows is that Pizza Hut cheer. Last time I checked, we're co-captains. You can't make monumental decisions without me. We have to find someone before the game on Friday, or we'd be put on probation. But if you want to tell the girls no game and no introduction... Fine. But I'm so counting this as one of your three strikes. Better watch it. We wouldn't want you kicked off. I won't need my other two. The bell rings and students flood the hallway. Mom was wrong. Nothing is going to change because this place I get. Frankly, I've never found it that hard. I've always been well liked. Grace smiles and waves. She's the ultimate hostess, welcoming and warm. Here she reigns. Be nice. Don't say anything too controversial and say what people want to hear. But being well liked doesn't equal popularity. Popularity wasn't even my, on my radar. That was until. Allo Black's The Man plays as a side swept, banged, letterman jacket clad teenage god, Charlie Davies, 16, struts down the hallway. Charlie. When he walks down these halls, it's like he's John Cena entering ring, complete with entrance music, at least in my head. <clears throat> and even now, sometimes I still think he's going to blow right past me. He's getting closer and closer until he <clears throat> stops. But he never does. Charlie kisses Grace. The music stops. Foreheads touch, and for a second, it's only them in the hallway. There's my girl. I almost forgot how gorgeous you are. That's because Skype's lighting is the devil's work. The guys agreed I had the coolest chick. You were the only one down with the coach's zero visitation policy. I wasn't cool with it. Whatever they want to hear. Wasn't like I was, you know, visiting for him this summer anyway. It was an important time for you. Got you something. Charlie pulls out the world's largest office chair t-shirt. No way! That was like five hours away. Worth it for you to beat your dad and y'all's most random t-shirt swap. Is he coming down for the game? No, apparently he and his wife are in some couple's bowling league. His loss? Looks like I get to escort the hottest captain for cheerleading introductions again this year. And for a brief moment, we see a real connection between these two. So Grace kisses him, longer this time. I really did miss you. Me too. And I can't wait to get back to where we left things. Video chat is for Dungeons and Dragons losers. Almost on cue, a skinny awkward guy, Trevor, 16, clutching a video camera, crashes their conversation. Grace, you're here. Speaking of, speaking of what? Nothing, Trev. What's up? Speaking of is a transition implying you were speaking about me, my presence, or my opening statement. So, dude, you honestly lost me. Shocking. You weren't home this morning for pickup. The fridge calendar indicated you were at the doctor's. My neighbor Trevor didn't exactly get the hold your tongue memo. 
You were in my girlfriend's kitchen? I've been there back up alarm clock since middle school. Immediately turned off, Charlie unwraps himself from her. Baby, you sick? No, I went with my mom. She's going to get her boobs redone. I'm sorry, Trev. I should have called, but can I get a ride later? I'll be done editing at 5. Your chair practice ends at 5.30. So I'll meet you at 5.35 in the parking lot. How about 5.37? That works too. See you at 5.37. Trevor slips away. He longingly looks back at the couple and freezes when Grace sweetly pecks Charlie. The bustling students break his trance and he pushes through the crowd. Babe, you're burning up. Are you sure you weren't sick? I can't get sick before our first game. Panicked, Charlie pushes her away. Grace quickly recovers and grabs his hand. No, I'm excited to finally see you. What people want to hear. They walk together until they hear yelling from the library. Sounds like Riles is her typical chill self. Interior, SDHS library, continuous. Grace finds Riley, 16, a thin African-American girl who is more Banana Republic than her Forever 21 companions, with her sleek ponytail, tailored khakis, and button-down, banging on the computer keys. Riley and I might seem like unlikely friends. Head cheerleader and valedictorian sounds a little too breakfast club, but it works. I'm more First Lady Hillary, while she is Madam President Hillary. Grace slides the keyboard away from Riley. Who knew the library even opened up on the first day of school? The janitor let me in. I'm trying to hack the school system, which is surprisingly difficult. Shockingly, Principal Travis's password isn't 1234 or a password. Is hacking one of Columbia's must-have extracurricular activities? No, but now that you mention it, I bet Zuckerberg has a scholarship. I need to research that after I fix this computer meltdown. It has me second in the class. Second! Which has to be a mistake, seeing I've been number one since we learned to count. Didn't Dr. Rosenbach say you need to take healing breaths when you... He's a pot-smoking hippie. Shrimps shouldn't even be called doctors. It's almost as insulting as dentists. How was your real doctor's appointment? Initially, I tried keeping my surgery from Riley, but one day into my recovery, she barged into my house claiming unexplained radio silence. But today, I could distract her. It's probably Lena Kim. She's my first suspect. She's my only competition. It's true, our school wasn't exactly known for its academics. Interior, SDHS, classroom, day. A redneck with a thin porn stash, Coach Hutchins, taps his snakeskin cowboy boots in front of the class. This here is economics, and my first lesson is for the gentleman. Coach Hutchins starts to scribble on the board, cubic Z, but gives up writing and faces the students. Ah, screw. Cubic zirconium. They'll never know. A suave Spanish hunk, Alex, 16, saunters into the room. Let me help you out there, man. Alex completes the word zirconium on the board. Alex Sanchez. Sorry I'm late, but there was some complications with my transcripts. Apparently philosophy doesn't count as my world religion's requirements here. Sanchez, huh? You play soccer? You mean football? Look here, son. You're an American now. I'm from New York. Even worse, a Yankee. Take your seat. As I was saying, cubic zirconium. The ladies will never know. Alex slides next to Riley. She's enthralled in her book and is the one student who has not noticed Alex's arrival. I respectfully disagree. If you find a girl as beautiful as this, you've got to match that with an equally beautiful and rare gem. The classroom laughs. Riley doesn't look amused. What's your name, beautiful? Not interested. Interior, SDHS Cafeteria, day. Grace, red-faced with a slight sweat, puts a full tray of nachos down, sits next to Riley. Oh, it's like 108 degrees in here. Are you insane? They blew the budget on a post-global warming air conditioning system, yet we're still running Windows 2000. I've been rushing all day. It must have made me sweat. You never told me how the doctors went. What drugs did he put you on? Danazole or GnRH agonist? When did you become a drug rep? Please, they're glorified Avon ladies. After you were diagnosed, I did my research. Like I trust your health with any Tennessee trained physicians. What about alternative treatments? Grace spots Alex strutting into the cafeteria and tries to shift the conversation. Have you thought about the new kid? Maybe he stole your spot. Uh, it's not a guy. 70% of all high school valedictorians are girls. Plus, he's wearing a scarf in August. 
Riley watches as Grace savors a large bite of nachos while wiping the beads of sweat off her forehead with a napkin. He Benjamin buttoned you into menopause, didn't he? Menopause? Like my mom? Off of Apple Charlie. End of Act 1. Act 2. Interior, SDHS Cafeteria, Day. Charlie waits with his fully loaded tray and disgusted look on his face. Grace has gone utterly speechless. Riley's always been a genius, but even she's not psychic. Yep, Chuck. Just like your mom. We're talking about my mom's drying up lady parts. Wanna join in? At least one of us can think. Now I'm not even hungry. Mm, exactly. It's girl talk. Now hurry along to the boys' table. Charlie looks to Grace for permission to escape, and she nods. He flees to the safety of the football table. Why'd your mind go to menopause? You're sweating like Savannah in church and scarfing down nachos at stoner boner speeds. And you go to menopause? If you saw how swollen my gut is, you'd have me registered at Babies R Us. Please, if you'd had sex, I could tell. And I know immaculate conception has always been your greatest fear. But I don't think the angel Gabriel visited you. Medically induced menopause is one of the most common treatments for endometriosis. Frankly, if he didn't mention any of this, it's time to ditch him. I heard about this specialist in California. Fine. He put me on some loop around thing that apparently puts you into menopause, but that would only happen if I was like ancient, like 40 or something. Loop run? I got some stuff on that. Riley pulls out her iPad. Side effects include hot flashes, night sweats, loss of sex drive, mood swings, memory and hair loss, vaginal dryness, painful sex, and depression. After those side effects, I'm depressed. Plus side, no periods. Scroll down. Look, right there. How menopause destroyed my marriage. That's what you focus on? Not that desert vag or personality whiplash? Proves that Charlie can't know. Really? Because the whole can't get pregnant thing is kind of every 16 year old guy's golden ticket. Yeah, but what? not when it's for the same reason why your mom can't. You've been together since you sprouted boobs in 7th grade. I might find dating in high school as useful as a Bravo housewife. But even I can tell he loves you. Grace stares at the screensaver picture on her phone. It's Charlie in full football uniform kissing a beaming grace when she won the homecoming princess. No, he loves this girl, not the one wearing two pairs of spanks to hide a bloated gut and nasty surgery scar. I'm the next Lisa Anderson. I don't even know who that is. Exactly. She was a senior our freshman year. She was the first junior to be head cheerleader, but got some weird thyroid disease and blew up. She was exiled to the drama club. Let's step off the ledge. It could be worse. You could be Katie Sindler. So she got knocked up? The kid's really cute and she got on MTV. I think she's in rehab now. It's better to be infamous than invisible. Interior, SDHS Library Day. Trevor situates a tripod in front of the wall. A gorgeous yet oh so gay Brandon, 15, sachets into the room. Soft lighting, please! You're not going to be on air. I spent all of last year paying my dues. Besides, you're horrible on camera. Your eyes bug out, it's distracting and disturbing, and you're completely unfiltered, which is deadly. It's Trevor's take. It's supposed to be opinionated. It's also supposed to have viewers. Especially if you want to nab a Peter Jennings Young Journalist Fellowship. How do you know about that? You can't have takeover without ammo, and you can't win without playing to your strengths. One being moi. I do accents, cue cards, prompter, anything but voiceovers. This face was born to be in front of the camera. We'll try it. But today is not a fair test because the viewership will be huge during the homecoming court announcements. Precisely. I only premiere in sweeps. Interior, Saudi Daisy High School, locker room day. Grace, locked in a bathroom stall, looks down at her scar on her lower abdomen. This all started when they found an 8-inch mass on my ovary. One emergency surgery later, I was left with this hideous scar. It will be just like you had a C-section, said the nurse ca named Candy. With a C-section, a scar represents everything you've gained. Grace wraps an ace bandage around the scar. My scar just represents everything I could lose. 
Grace, come on. Grace rushes out of the stall, already changed into Sophie shorts and a tank top. Since when are you so modest? I had to pee. I figured I'd change in there too. It takes you five minutes to pee? I had cramps. Guys, it's starting. The cheerleaders huddle around an iPad. Brandon appears on screen for Trevor's take. Interior, SDA Jazz Library, continuous. Trevor films Brandon as he reads the list like it's the finals on American Idol. Homecoming is a month away. Your junior class homecoming princess nominees are... I've got chills. Trevor wave, waves his hand, signaling to get on with it. Jules Adderman, Savannah Jenkins, and of course, for the third year in a row, Grace Archer. And now, for your junior princes, first, Charlie Davies. Brandon holds up a shirtless photo of Charlie. Interior, computer lab, day. Riley perches on the last row, behind a geeky Lena Kim, 15. She composes a text message to Grace. Watching Lena Kim, no suspicious behavior, I have to get closer. She leans forward to get a better look at Lena's computer, never noticing Alex is set down. Interesting. That's your type. Stalking is creepy, not charming, says the girl on what appears to be a stakeout. Alex inspects Trevor's tape playing on Riley's computer. The production value of that physically pains me. Ignoring him, Riley nabs Lena's seat while, when she leaves for a bathroom break. She scrolls through the computer history. I would know. You're talking to the next great reality TV producer. Exploiting people, promoting trash, yeah, I actually see that. Riley's now digging through Lena Kim's backpack. You see, you get me. To think, this basement blogger is the closest thing this dump has to a school TV station. Isn't this the part where you sell the perks of small town living? Me? If everything goes according to plan, it's a one-way ticket to Columbia University. That's where my dad went. Riley heaves down the backpack in a moment of rage. Her full attention is now on Alex. Just not the way he wanted it. What? Great. First I'm dethroned and now I'm competing with a legacy? Pause on the cardiac arrest. I don't want to go to Columbia. Yeah, right. Look, I don't have time to babysit someone who will have a shortcut to my dream school when I've been busting my ass since preschool. So, so leave me alone. Riley storms out of the lab. Interior, SDHS hallway day. Grace finds a bouquet of roses at her locker. The note reads, To Princess Grace, the tradition continues, love, Charlie. Riley's right. I don't have to worry. Exterior parking lot continuous. Grace inhales the roses and passes a piss to Trevor. Grace, it's almost 5.45. And aren't you allergic to roses? Grace sneezes. It's romantic and I just need to leave Charlie a note. Two seconds. She opens the front door to Charlie's enormous truck. She digs through the middle compartment. Charlie and I are meant to be. I'm... No pen, but a note catches her eye. She reads it. Miss you. We'll always have the summer. Love, B. Totally screwed. End of Act 2. Act 3. Interior, Grace's bedroom, morning. Grace stumbles out of bed. Her mirror is a shrine to teen royalty covered with dried corsages, homecoming princess sashes, dance photos of her and Charlie, and a plastic tiara. I've always been a morning person. Even when everyone started sleeping until noon, I was up. But now... She looks at her reflection. Her face is flushed, hair soaked with sweat. She looks like she's run a marathon. I'm starting to see the appeal of sleeping all day. She wraps the ace bandage around her scar. She pulls out one pair of spanks and yanks them over the bandage. Then she struggles to pull up the second pair. But winners don't hide. She grabs the mysterious note she found in Charlie's truck. And I hate to lose. Interior, Grace's kitchen, morning. Grace, hair slicked back into a tight ponytail, searches through the cabinets. Diane, with a full face of makeup and no sweat, jogs into the kitchen. Seven minute mile, personal best. You should have joined me. Oh, honey, you're wearing your hair up? It's only the second day, way too early to be phoning in. Grace shoots her mom a death stare. Diane lovingly pets the outline of Grace's naturally round face. It's a very severe hairstyle for your face shape. How are you feeling? Never better. Where's my cereal? I threw it out. Carbs are the enemy. It's a protein power-up shake. It's good. It's chocolate. That's not chocolate. That's chalk. You can't eat like you used to. Your metabolism went from a Ferrari to a school bus overnight. Here. Diane gives her a goodie bag. 
prescription strength deodorant, calcium supplements, hair thickening shampoo. Mom, I don't need any of this. I haven't had any symptoms. I think of it as a preventative. Grace packs up her things to go. She gives Diane the world's largest office chair t-shirt from Charlie. Will you send this to Dad? I so won this year. No way he found one more random. Send it signature required. Not sure his new bride will be old enough to sign for it. Mom, she's 31. Interior, Trevor's Prius, day. Trevor hangs on every monotone word of NPR's morning edition. Grace does not. She's focused on Charlie's note. The guy's an idiot, but I bet you the Bible beaters will beat him right into the office. This should be a mandatory IQ test before you're allowed to vote. What's with the note? It's a chair I'm working on. Don't let me distract you from the intricacies. Grace remains distracted by the note. The last time I mocked the cheer, you lectured me for 20 minutes on how Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a cheerleader. What is up? Nothing. Just don't feel like fighting useless battles this morning. You once made a PowerPoint presentation with a hundred slides on Harry and Hermione's soulmate status. Even JK came around on that one. You didn't try once to change from NPR to Ryan Seacrest. Something's up. Stop digging, Trev. Nothing's going on. I barely saw you this summer, and when I did, you seemed off. That's because I miss Charlie. There's no story here. Exterior, SDHS parking lot, continuous. Grace scoots out of the car. Alex opens Trevor's door. Trevor? Alex Sanchez, I love your... Alex inspects Trevor's busted up Prius and Old Navy clothes. Let's skip the small talk. It's your lucky day. I'm gonna save Trevor talk. It's Trevor's take, and it doesn't need saving. The lighting begs to disagree. The lighting's fine, and we're currently fully staffed. Trevor brushes past a frustrated Alex. Across the parking lot, Grace spots Charlie, but Savannah cuts her off. I need a tampon. What? A tampon. I don't want to have a shark attack on first period. I don't have one. Yesterday you had cramps, and we've been synced up since we both got it on the same day in sixth grade. Grace sees Charlie getting further away. I don't have my period today. Got it? Grace sidesteps around her to get to Charlie. He leaves his boys and envelops her in a hug. You didn't call me last night. I passed out after practice. Even my hair hurt. Found this in your truck. I don't know what this is. It's a love note. One I didn't write. So who is B? Grace hands him the note, and for a second Charlie looks panicked. He crumbles the note, and his cool demeanor returns. <laughs> Probably some obsessed freshman. Babe, you know how it is. We get Facebook requests from randos. Last year, you got five secret valentines, and some chick put a bra on my locker. People know us, even if we don't know them. Grace doesn't seem convinced. Charlie pulls her close to him. I don't know who wrote it. I do know the only person I missed this summer was you. Keep your truck locked, and your locker for that matter. Your mom had a Bible study tonight? Yeah, she's convinced it's a better place to meet guys than AA. So, can I come over? Maybe pick things up where we left off? Of course, where we left off was me barely holding on to my V card. And now it's more like an AARP card. Sounds perfect. Interior, SDHS, hallway, day. Riley corners Lena at her locker. What was it? Ordinary differential equations? Or maybe just a little advanced linear algebra? Riley, I didn't take any classes. Lena slams her locker door and runs off. Alex sneaks up behind Riley. Again, with the Asian obsession? You're worse than me after my summer in Thailand. I'm not obsessed. I just need to figure out what classes she possibly took to bump my number one ranking. What about that Trevor guy? He seems pretty smart. What's his deal? Alex nods at Trevor, loading camera equipment into his locker. Trev only focuses on two things, liberal arts and his precious Peter Jennings fellowship. I thought you wanted every fellowship. Please, I have no use for journalism. A flowery op-ed won't keep China from dominating us in the world market. So the hunt continues. You never told me much about your school. It must be really easy here compared to New York schools, even if you were an average student. Or maybe above average? Hmm. I thought you weren't interested in spoiled legacies. I'm feeling charitable today. Grace rushes up, totally ignoring Alex. I need you. I've heard that before. Sorry to interrupt. I have some pertinent Googling to do. Alex struts off. Do you want Charlie to make him leave you alone? No, he's harmless. 
He's actually... Do you like him? He's a high school boy. They're as useful to me as landlines. If only I felt that way. Charlie wants to come over tonight, and I'm definitely not in the mood. I thought you said you didn't have any of the side effects. I don't. I'm just stressed, so it's a total mood killer. And my scar isn't healed enough to cover with makeup. We'll find a way to cover it up. We just need to restart your sex drive. And how are we going to do that? I might have an idea. Interior, Riley's house. Parents' bedroom, day. Riley digs through a cabinet and pulls out a stack of Women's Day magazines. I remember my mom had a bunch of these reignite your love life articles clipped which I successfully repressed till this moment. Riley flips through the articles. Side note, I'm submitting the lady to hoarders. She's got TV guides. Who even knew they still printed them? It says here, watch a man exercise or work around the house. Watching him sweat will make you sweat. Let's hit up football practice. Exterior football field day. Charlie throws a perfect spiral down the field. Riley watches with binoculars. His form looks good. I'd say he's throwing, on average, 10 more yards. She hands the binoculars to Grace, who's busy inhaling popcorn. Don't judge me. I live in a card-free household. Interior, Grace's bedroom, day. Grace and Riley lounge on her bed. Recapture the butterfly feeling by reading old love letters. We're not in the dark ages. Who writes letters anymore? How about Tex? He's really sweet. But he really has a hard time with you are and your. A little bit later, the girls sprawl out with magazines. When all else fails, fantasize about a leading man. Ew, she wrote in Tom Selleck? Is he even still alive? An hour or so later, on the TV, Ryan Gosling's muscles bulge out of his rain-soaked shirt in the scene from The Notebook. Riley throws a pillow at Sleeping Grace. You slept through Ryan Gosling's eternal love for Rachel McAdams? I know you don't want to hear this, but I think this is more than stress. No, I just need a plan. Charlie's going to be here any minute. I think you're going to have to use the age-old practice of faking it. Interior, Grace's bedroom night. Grace and Charlie snuggle on the bed. Grace seems to be really invested in what's on the TV. It's cool that you're finally willing to watch SportsCenter with me, but don't you think we should take advantage of the empty house? Charlie kisses her. Things start to get heated. He goes for Grace's cheerleader talk. Well, let's keep it on. We could role play. But you are a cheerleader. Pretend I'm a South Doyle cheerleader. Seriously? You said they were trashier than mine. Grace answers by kissing him more fiercely. He gets on top of her and she gasps for air. Do you want to stop? Don't stop. Her face is beet red. Sweat falls from her forehead as he kisses her neck. I'm hot. Me too, baby. No, it's hot in here. It's us, baby. It, it's too hot. Grace shoves him off, her and hightails into the bathroom, slamming the door. Interior bathroom continuous. Grace, nearly hyperventilating, splashes water on her face. Grace, are you okay? I'm fine. Let me in. Grace no. throws off her shirt. Her skin is red, blotchy and covered in sweat. No, just go home. Grace, you're acting nuts. Grace rips off her bandage, revealing her scar. Charlie jiggles the door. I'm coming in. No, Charlie, get out of my house now. Her bedroom door slams. He's gone. She looks in the mirror. She's a mess. Red face, mascara smeared eyes, sweaty hair, and one ugly scar taunts her. Well, that went great. And we're back to three. Act four. Interior Grace's kitchen, morning. Grace gags. She swallows a gulp of protein shake. See, not so bad. How was Bible study? Such a dead end. It was like all women had a few married men, and allegedly happily married. There's always AA. Diane notices her water jug has been changed. Finally, Charlie's back from camp. Oh yeah, he did that last night. I love that boy. Hold on to him. The good ones are hard to find. Interior, SDHS, hallway, day. Grace decorates Charlie's locker. It's a shrine of football photos, newspaper clips, and his number seven. Did I die? I might have gone a bit overboard, but it's the first game of the season. Charlie will look at her and opens his locker. Uh, about last night. No, I wanted to talk last night. I waited outside your house for an hour like some lame-ass stalker, and you still didn't bother to answer your phone. That's when we should have talked. Now it's game day. Charlie blows past her, off disappointed Grace. 
Interior, SDHS hallway continuous. Riley glares at Alex, who playfully laughs with Lena Kim. He struts over to her, waving a song sheet. Hey, beautiful. Insert eye roll, smart remark, and brush off. Can we skip our normal foreplay? I've got news. Our God is an awesome God? What? You've been saved? No. But I do know more about VBS, which apparently is not an STD, but a cult-like vacation Bible school Lena Kim went to this summer. So you're buying this Jesus cover too? I watched a three-hour slideshow set to Christian Rock last night with her. I never knew there were so many euphemisms for Jesus. Welcome to the South. So what do you want in exchange for that information? Nothing. Are you always this distrusting? I don't like owing people anything. Then you're going to hate this. I told my dad about a promising Columbia prospect, and he got a recruiter to come visit. How did you pull that off? We share a Hampton house with her. Of course you do. She'll be here Monday. Why, why are you helping me? Because you're the only person here who looks half as bored as I do. Figured we might as well stick together. Riley smiles, the ice thawing. I only have the weekend to prepare. I have to get my resume complete, questions prep, an outfit. What you need to do is relax. And I'm an excellent relaxer. How about this weekend I show you? Grace will probably make me go to the after party tonight. I guess it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you were there. I'll take that. Alex struts away, leaving a smiling Riley. Interior, SDHS common area, day. Nurse Wilson, carrying a huge box, rushes after Grace. Grace, the uniforms are here. Uh, they're early. Just hide them. I mean, put them in the office. Nurse Wilson holds up one of the uniforms with the word Rebels splashed on the chest. They are so cute. I thought you said the new uniforms wouldn't be in for weeks. Girls, the uniforms are in. Wait, they were supposed to be crop tops. Uh, school board vetoed it. Savannah grabs a box before heaving a uniform at Grace. She digs around. Why do they always put the double X smalls on the bottom? Grace tries to stretch the skirt, but it doesn't give. Girls, remember to tell your fathers to be at the field by five sharp. But Nurse Wilson, not everyone's dad will be present, right, Grace? Grace, I, I presume Charlie will be escorting you tonight? Yeah, of course. Interior, SDHS Library, day. Brandon helps Trevor with his tripod. I thought we agreed I'm way too attractive for manual labor. When we expand beyond a crew of two, you can skip setup. Alex struts over and looks down at the makeshift studio. I ran the TV station on my old school. We shared the MTV studios, but going low budget could be rewarding. We might be low budget, but we have a loyal following. No, we don't. People only watch when we announce things like homecoming court, not your hard-hitting vegan crackdowns on the lunch ladies. They use the words vegan and vegetarian interchangeably. You're trying to be CNN when you should be TMZ. Already loving this idea. We're good. Yeah, I bet the Peter Jennings program doesn't care about audience size. <laughs> On a trial basis only. Are you covering tonight? Of course we are. It's the first game of the season. Not the game. The after party. That's your story. Interior, SDHS ladies room. Day. Riley finds Grace partially dressed. Her tight skirt is stuck around her hips. I can't fit into this. Did they send you the wrong size? They sent me the size I ordered last night. I remember to change our order from crop tops to full ones, but I thought the skirt would still fit. Riley fiddles with the zipper. Uh, maybe we should pull it over your head? Riley helps Grace take off the skirt, revealing an ace bandage and two pairs of spanks. Grace, your skin feels like a thousand degrees. Take off the spanks! No way, it covers my scar. Riley pulls the skirt over Grace's head. She keeps pulling it down until she stops at her hips. <gasps> it's stuck. Just wear your old one. I'll be the only one. I can't. Here, can you straighten? Riley straight irons Grace's sweat-soaked hair, causing it to steam. It's not going to work on wet hair. It's got to. Riley keeps ironing, causing more sweat and steam. Grace pulls and pulls at the skirt until rip. I'm done. All those symptoms you research, I have them all. I've got zero sex drive, I'm battling the middle age spread, and it always feels like it's a thousand degrees. Grace. How am I going to go out there? I can't hide this. My hair's a mess, my uniform's ripped, and I don't even have a dad to walk me out for cheerleader introductions. Charlie always walks you out. That's before I hot flash raged on him. The rip's not that bad. 
mostly the lining. It might actually help. Riley pulls gently and the skirt falls into place. I can loosely sew it and will ignore the weird irony of me sewing a rebel uniform. Just don't do any crazy flips. And headbands were invented to hide sweaty hair. As for your introduction, I'm thinking something progressive. Exterior, SDHS football stadium night. Fans fill the stands under the sign Rebel Pride. Trevor lines up his camera. Brandon and Alex seem bored. Brandon, remember to introduce each cheerleader and her father. Hard hitting news here. Along the sidelines, the cheerleaders gather with their fathers. Grace walks arm in arm with Riley. Now that's a story. Girl on girl always sells. That's off limits. Robot journalist has feelings. He's hopeless. He doesn't get that pops like Grace don't do crossovers. Pops? Popular people. They don't date outside their so social standing. Just start the introductions. Your Saudi Daisy Rebel co-cheerleader Captain Miss Savannah Jenkins, escorted by her father Randy Jenkins. Savannah clutches her dad's arm, struts past Riley and Grace. I always thought Riley was obsessed with you, so I guess she's the guy. You don't need this grief. I'm fine. You know I don't care. I appreciate that, but I'm feeling better. And if you walk with me, it will only make a bigger deal. Riley walks away. Grace steps up. She's next. Your Saudi Daisy Rebel co-cheerleader, Captain Miss Grace Archer. She looks to the packed stadium and doesn't move. She slowly starts to walk until someone grabs her arm. Charlie. Escorted by Charlie Davies. I didn't think you'd be up for this. No matter what, you know I always have your back. And he had. Why did I ever think he wouldn't now? Nothing had to change. Charlie leads Grace onto the field. I'm so sorry about last night. I've been holding back, but I'm done with that. No more waiting tonight after the game. When they hit their mark for their final applause, Grace sweetly kisses his cheek. Actually, I think we should take a break. Charlie unwraps himself from her and bolts back to his team. Or maybe it already has. End of Act 4. Act 5. Exterior, suburban house, Charlie's truck, night. Charlie parks his truck behind a sea of other pickup trucks outside a southern mansion. Grace wraps her arms around herself as the physical space between her and Charlie grows. I've seen enough vintage Ross and Rachel, Nick at night, to know what a break means. He'd been screwing a coffee store girl by midnight. A random slut blows a kiss at Charlie as she shakes her short shorts past them in perfect party house. Maybe not a coffee store girl, but probably that slut. But this was a breakup. Grace, I always told you we'd go at your speed. Then you kicked me out last night like I was forcing you. It was some 24-hour bug, and I didn't want you to get sick before the game. It wasn't just last night. All summer, you've been weird, like you're hiding something. Distance sucks. Everyone says that. Then why do you flinch when I touch you, like I'm some attacker? I'm not that guy. I know you are not. Then who is? What? Is there another guy? Did he hurt you? You know I'll kill him if someone hurt you, Grace. Maybe I've been selling him short. There's nobody. There could never be anybody else. Charlie lets out a sigh of relief. I've just been feeling a bit insecure. Grace gently rubs her stomach, instinctively sucking it in. Maybe he's more mature. Maybe. Because he put on, what, eight pounds? Ten, at the most? Or maybe I'll never get naked in front of anyone in my life. I guess I did too much globe trotting during Yogurtland's Tastes of the World promotion this summer, but I'm glad you're weighing me in now. You're doing it again. Turning it around, acting crazy. This isn't you. Nothing has changed. Yeah, it has. You never used to lie to me. I'm done. Charlie jumps off the truck, slamming the door. Alone, Grace pulls out her cell phone. Interior, church meeting room, intercut phone conversation. Diane shamelessly flirts with a group of chubby men when her phone rings. Hey, Mark. Miss me? Mom, it's me. Diane signals to the men one minute and slides into the corner. I know, but this Overeaters Anonymous meeting is a gold mine. I've got three dinner dates, which I know is wrong. I need you to come get me. Diane stiffens, now in full panic mode. Are you cramping? Spotting? Bleeding? No, I'm not sick. Charlie, don't me. Then I'm not coming. Why? Are you planning it? 
hitting up a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. In breakups, there are winners and losers, and you are not a loser. Put on some lip gloss, your emergency concealer for the mess under your eyes. Grace looks in the mirror at her mascara-stained eyes. And show him what he's missing. Grace wipes her eyes and applies the concealer. Off, a determined Grace. Interior, suburban home, living room, night. Teenagers grind to the loud music. Couples grow up on the sofa, and lively drinking games take over the picturesque pottery barn-style house. Everyone seems to be having the time of their lives except Trevor. He guards his camera as Alex and Brandon do shots. Watch it. This is a Canon 6D. If it gets any alcohol on it, it's ruined. Alex offers him a shot, which he ignores. And if you get alcohol on you, do you get fun? I've got to keep clear-eyed. Why are we here? I'm a journalist, not paparazzi. The only difference is the subject matter. Either way, to get the real story, you don't go to the sanctioned events. You go underground. That's where the story happens. Alex mingles with the crowd. I only half understand what he's getting at, but I'm 90% sure I agree with him 100%. Trevor? Trevor ignores him because across the way, Grace glides into the house. She's putting on a good show, saccharine smile and small talk. She stops when she sees Trevor and rushes over. Is this an actual Trevor Jones spotting at a party? A work assignment. A high-pitched woo-woo, causing them to look into the kitchen. Savannah clings to Charlie while playing beer pong. Isn't that normally your position? Crestfallen Grace plasters on her uniformed fake smile. Actually, I gotta take advantage of this rare event. What do you say, partner? She extends her hand to Trevor. He jumps at the opportunity and follows her into the kitchen. There goes clear eyes. Interior, party, bedroom, later that night. Alex finds Riley alone reading a book. Here I thought I was your plus one, not how to impress during your college interview. It's called multitasking. By Monday I will know more about Columbia than their own recruiter. They don't want to hear their own stats. They want to know about you. GPA, extracurriculars, Rex, got it! No, that's generic. They want to hear about your dad. Lamar works two jobs to get out of the projects, hoping his baby girl would go to college. Uh, my dad's name is Richard, and he's an engineer. I'm not playing the race card. You play whatever card you got. Plus, you gotta massage it in. Speaking of massages... Alex plops on the bed. She playfully hits him with a pillow. <laughs> Never a half a day. Interior living room continuous. Grace tosses the ping pong ball into the final cup. Yes! She jumps into Trevor's arms in victory until split. That's what happens when you blow off camp and boycott cardio. Charlie sympathetically gazes as Grace's eyes fill with tears, and she sees the deep split in her cheerleading skirt. He can't resist the rescue. No, that's my bad. I, I ripped it earlier. The party goers laugh. Savannah fumes. Grace smiles sweetly at Charlie, but the moment has passed. Rack him. Who's got next? Grace grabs her backpack and slithers through the crowd into the empty hallway. She rips the ace bandage off and lets out a heavy breath. She stuffs the bandage into her open backpack. Freedom! Grace opens the door to the bedroom, continuous. Alex and Riley are in full makeout mode. In shock, Grace drops her open backpack and her stuff goes everywhere. Oh god, I'm so sorry. Wait, Riley? Alex hands her the backpack and she yanks it away. She throws her stuff into it, but the adoption pamphlet falls out. What happened to Southern Hospitality? Give us a minute. Alex hands Riley his cardigan. He brushes past Grace. What happened to high school boyfriends are like love handles, they cling to you and hold you back? No relationship status is gonna get updated. We were just fooling around. Great. Now even you're hooking up. Right. Because no one would ever notice Grace Archer's dorky sidekick. Interior kitchen continuous. Charlie shovels chips into his mouth. Savannah breaks one into tiny pieces. I'm gonna puke. You're such a lightweight. Interior hallway continuous. Savannah stumbles into the vacant hallway. She quickly sobers up and <coughs> confidently strides along until she stops dead in her tracks to listen at the door. You don't even know him. Interior bedroom continuous. I do know him. And you would too if you ever stopped thinking about your crisis for one second. That's not fair. Ever since you found out, it's all you want to talk about. I'm sorry I haven't been able to keep up with douchebag newbies because my life has been changed forever. And that's all I've heard about. 
your hormones, your excessive carb cravings, how your body's going to change, what happens when Charlie finds out, and I'm so sick of it. Riley storms out the door. Savannah hides, kneeling on the floor, and discovers the adoption pamphlet from the old biddy. Exterior, living room, continuous. Alex catches up to a very pissed off Riley. Are we moving venues? The moment has officially passed. I think we could get it back. Mm, I have to get up early to build a house for, for some hurricane victims. I think our suckers for that selfless Mother Teresa act. I'll call you. Mm, no. Tonight was fun, and when I'm looking for fun again, I'll call you. Riley peels off his cardigan, but Alex stops her. Keep it. It looks better on you. Riley leaves. Alex joins Trevor and Brandon. Maybe it is time to pack it in. Wait, Savannah's on a bitch walk? Savannah pushes people out of the way to get to Charlie. Girl's pure evil and always good for a good table flipping scene. Alex grabs the camera from Trevor, pointing it to Savannah. Watch the Canon 6D. You're about to get your story. Savannah whispers something into Charlie's ear. Grace slips back into the room and Charlie makes a beeline towards her. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? The jig is up, Grace. I know. This is it. My cover is about to be blown into pieces. Savannah holds up the adoption pamphlet. You're totally knocked up. Or not. Off a shock looking Grace. End of Act 5. Act 6. Interior. Suburban house living room. Night. All eyes are on Grace, waiting for answers. Apparently, I was a really early talker. My mom brags it's because she bought those Your Baby Can Read VHS tapes, but suddenly my verbal prowess morphed into a verbal paralysis. Alex zooms in on Frozen Grace, TMZ style. Trevor rips the camera out of his hands. What are you doing? This is gold! Child period is officially over. Grace, what is she talking about? Are you pregnant? Of course she is. I heard her blabbering to her girlfriend Riley about it. She busted out of her uniform and her monthly visitor was a no-show. Bust out the cigars, you're gonna be a daddy. That's not possible. Denial. So typical. You know that's not possible. Wait, you're not the dad? This just gets better and better. What's next? You're gonna claim immaculate conception? Clearly there was only one mature way to get out of this. Grace jets out the back door. Bail. Exterior, treehouse, night. Trevor climbs up the ladder to find Grace staring at the carved inscription. Trevor and Grace equals BFF. I figured you'd be here. How? We haven't been up here in years. You haven't. But this is where the magic happens. Grace slides off the blanket that she's sitting on. No, not that. This is my studio. Trevor sits down. Awkward silence until... Remember when I got mono and lost my spleen? I don't have mono. That's not what this is about. I know. But after my spleen surgery, they said I could never play contact sports again. That's when you gave up basketball. For six months, I did nothing. Until my mom gave me a camera. I got really into video journals. After watching them, I really started to hate my face. I'm better behind the camera, but maybe you should give it a try. Trevor gives her his new Canon 6D camera. I can't take her camera. It's old. Just got a new one. This will just collect us. Interior, Grace's bedroom, morning. Diane nudges a passed out Grace. Wake up! I need a spa day. I normally have to guilt trip you into some rejuvenation. Since when are you into ditching? Since I'm the lead story at school? Of course you are. Archer women always are. People want to be us. But they can't. So they talk about us. <coughs> What did I do? What any A-lister would do. Control the story by giving it your spin. Interior, SDHS hallway day. As Grace creeps through the cr crowd, her billowy tunic blows. The student's gone. Everyone's on baby bump watch. It seems like a lifetime ago that I thought this place seemed easy. Except Charlie. He walks towards her. Please stop. He'll stop. He always stops. He blows right past her. She chases after him. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have bailed. Awkward beat, he says nothing. If I knew I stayed, it'd be officially over. And I needed a little more time because I don't know how not to be your girlfriend. Charlie stays silent. So that's my problem. Interior, SDHS library day. Riley sits confidently in a chair, but her bouncing knee betrays her. 
Stoic, no-nonsense female, Columbia recruiter, 40, fixates on her files. Your transcript is extremely impressive, and the peer recommendation was a nice touch. The, the what? Your peer recommendation from Grace Archer. It was refreshing to read something so heartfelt. Thank you. You've probably heard of our summer program for rising seniors. Of course. Over 50% of students who attend eventually are admitted to the undergrad program. Normally, we only take a few students from each state, and never more than one student from each school. Riley looks around the empty room. Thank goodness for my underachieving classmates. Alex sneaks behind Riley. Sorry, I'm late. The recruiter jumps up to give Alex a warm hug. You're right on time. How's your dad? Besides regretting never asking you out, he's fine. You sure did inherit his charm. He must be proud, especially being first in your class. Riley's in shock. It was Alex this whole time. But this girl is not going to lie down for you. You two know each other? Very well. Good. Nothing like friendly competition. Interior, SDHS, common area, continuous. Grace waits at the door. Riley storms out. How'd it go? Turns out Lena wasn't lying. Alex was. He's number one. What's the plan? Riley watches Alex sucking up to the Columbia recruiter. Beat him. Thanks for your recommendation. It was time for me to start talking about someone other than myself. Can I claim narcissism as a side effect? I'll allow it. Riley knows his grace is loose tunic. Normally I'm not the fashion police, but do you really think billowy is the look you want to go with? Maybe it is. I mean, menopause makes me Kris Jenner. Unplanned pregnancy makes me Kim Kardashian. Isn't there a non-Kardashian solution? I know it's not a perfect cover. Or permanent. It might look sketchy when you don't pop out a kid. But it buys me time. Interior, SDHS, Library, Day. Grace interrupts Trevor and Brandon's pre-show preparations. Don't worry, I'll never hear that footage from the party. Total waste of sweeps material, if you ask me. You should air it. I'll even give you an exclusive statement, but only if you read it on air. He's transitioning away from on-camera to off-camera. Some <coughs> people have the face for it, some don't. I like his face. I have a filter problem. Maybe a co-host would help? Then I want my name listed first. Not you. Grace. You in? You could read your own statement. I don't think it's my thing. I like your voice. You should use it. Moments later, Brandon begrudgingly films Trevor and Grace. I'm proud to introduce my newest co-host, Grace Archer. And she has an exclusive for us. Yes. I, I know that there's been a lot of rumors sort of swirling around about me, but everything you heard is... Speak up. Don't you want everyone to hear you? For the first time in my life, I actually did. Totally false. I'm not pregnant. I'm actually the opposite. I'm in menopause. Interior, SDHS hallway, moments later. Mass of students part like the Red Sea for a confident race stride through them. She stops in front of the sign reading girls' locker room. My secret was out, and it actually felt good. Maybe it would be okay. Interior SDHS locker room day. The girls and Nurse Wilson go silent at the sight of Grace. Or not. Nice of you to join us. I'm sorry I'm late. Let's go stretch. Not so fast. We decided you're no longer a good representative of our school spirit. Excuse me? Three strikes, remember? Since when are medical issues considered a strike? They're not. But lying is. And you didn't have your wisdom teeth out this summer, did you? That's a technicality. Or when you said that the school board vetoed our crop tops. I checked. They didn't. Look, I'm sorry. Then you dropped a bombshell on air without consulting your cheer sisters, violating our unity clause. Savannah, I think Grace deserves some flexibility. Clearly, those were extreme circumstances. Shocking. You're in her back pocket. Seeing that she handpicked you without talking to us, this isn't a dictatorship. Fine. Let's vote so we can use our time for something useful like practice. All in favor of the leaving grace of her chair duties, raise your hands. Savannah and a few others slowly raise their hands. I'm sure we'll still be considered the hottest squad when word gets out that our co-captain is drying up. And we'll adjust up our budget if she keeps busting out of uniforms. More hands go up until all the cheerleaders girls' hands are in the air. 
So much for sisterly unity. Grace rushes out of the locker room into the interior SDHS hallway continuous. Grace collides with Charlie. They stare at each other before Charlie tries to escape. Let's get this breakup talk over with so I can officially hit rock bottom. I don't want to break up anymore. You don't? Because I don't know how not to be your boyfriend. Charlie takes her hand and leads her through the crowd. Maybe not everything was changing. Montage, various locations, night. One, Grace's bedroom, night. Grace sits and talks into Trevor's camera. But I am. Grace looks at the homecoming prediction chart on her computer. It reads Jules Adderman, 30%, Savannah Jenkins, 65%, Grace Archer, 5%. My secret was out, but some will stay hidden. Two, Savannah's bathroom, night. Savannah throws down a bag filled with enemas and laxatives. Taped up photos of anorexic models line her mirror. Because we all have secrets. Three, run down apartment, night. Alex unlocks the door and crashes into a worn out sofa. We're all hiding something. A woman's voice calls out from the lone bedroom. Alex? I'm home, Mom. Go back to sleep. He sends a text and throws his phone down on a stack of bills stamped with red letters overdue on them. Four, Riley's bedroom, night. Riley takes notes when her phone beeps. She reads the text message, all's fair and love in Columbia. Looking forward to a study break. Sometimes it's our feelings. Riley wraps Alex's cardigan around her. Five, outside the suburban home, Charlie's truck. Charlie types a text message to Grace. Practice was brutal, gonna crash, love you. But the thing about secrets is that it's only a matter of time. Passenger door opens, but the person is not yet in view. I got your note. Sorry it took me so long to come by. I missed you too. Before they come out. Charlie leans in for a kiss and the passenger is revealed. Brandon. End of episode.